What's up, sisters and friends? Happy Monday, everybody. Y'all, this is so exciting because normally I pre-record the podcast, but today is actually Monday. Me and my grandma, Two Mama, are recording this this morning and it's going out later this afternoon. So y'all are getting some real-time stuff here. We uh, are so excited to talk to y'all about the holiday season. I'm going to interview the queen of traditions, the best host that I know, and hopefully uh, just the traditions that she has and the love that she has for traditions and hosting can encourage encourage you this holiday season because it has encouraged me so much. I think it has, um, it's been one of the reasons I love to host. And I've actually noticed that it's um, very intimidating for people my age to host. They're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And I never really felt that way because I always watched you do it so well. And I have to just throw this out there. She's not really a good cook. And so you'd always be a good cook to host, okay? I mean, you you exactly. make your things. You do yes. your stuff. I've got my things. But you're yes. not like the best yes. cook in the world. That's exactly So right. if you're thinking yes. hosting's out of the question for me, I'm not a good cook, I don't have the right house, I don't have the right blah, 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 you're not out of the question. But we're going to talk about so much more, so many fun stuff. And we have to start by talking about, we had a really exciting weekend. We did. Crazy weekend. Crazy. We started with a wedding. And or, the, the different thing about that wedding was it was four o'clock in the afternoon. Which I loved. Which actually we loved at the end when we yeah. realized at 7.30 we were about walking out of there. I know. And but it was it made for a different Saturday, you know, because yeah. everything had to be. It's true. Know, well, and of course, out. my family, we have Rebecca texting at 3.40. What time does the wedding start? No, she and didn't. And we basically text back, you missed it. But <gasps> then she, do you not see her pulling no. up during communion? No, yes. I did not. That is Rebecca. That, that is that Rebecca. Is and Will, Will and Abby, they all thought it started at six. We're like, did well, you read I mean, the invitation? You have to admit, four is an unusual time. It is an unusual You have to, maybe the invitation should have had it bolded. Four. Something. Big. <laughs> big four. Big yeah. four. Yeah, it was kind of an unusual time, but it was so fun and yes, so okay. sweet. It was at camp, which mm-hmm. Two Mama which I love. loves camp. Yeah. How many years have you worked at camp? Okay. I'm going to have to say it. It's been 51 years. Are you serious? Yes. 51 years. Who does that? Who does <laughs> that is right. I say everybody grows up from camp except me. And That's I'm still awesome. out there. No one's yes. more committed. But it yeah. actually is really sweet because you met to Papa at camp. I did. Mom met dad at camp mm-hmm. and then um reeves are he's like my god brother we grew up together he met lydia at camp and so another sweet camp wedding and yes. camp couple so that was fun i think this was yeah. the first time that we've had a reception in oh, really? there like that well no there was a wedding that i missed so it's possible. One wedding that yes, you missed I have all the missed, years. I think. But um, we've done the weddings at the lake and down in the in the field, the softball field. And this was in the pavilion, which is, for most people, you know, like a pavilion is just a big area that's got covering. And um, it's relatively new for us. When I say new, like I've been there 50 Pretty years. New. So like 10 years. No, maybe not even that, that long. No. Like a couple no. Of, yeah, maybe four, four or five, five yeah. years. Yeah. And so, um, and it, we actually were able to use the AstroTurf from Sadie's yeah. wedding. That AstroTurf that, is that, a good that thing that has, Yeah, that's been going around. Yeah. That has. And so it was beautiful. And then had the reception in our newly remodeled gymnasium, mm-hmm. which now Looks so nice. It was yeah. great. It was fun. That was the first. No, well, me, Christian, and Honey were just in Chance and Maya's wedding. Yeah. That was the first wedding of a friend that me and Christian were both in. Like, we're equally as close with the bride and the groom, and it was really fun. Yeah. And then Honey was the flower girl. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh, she made me cry when she ran down the aisle because so it was so cute. funny. Because so rehearsal, she, like, cried her eyes out, would not do it. And I was just like, okay, this is not a good start. And, and at then, 18 months, you don't know. You never know. You but this is her third wedding That's at 18 right. months. <laughs> and uh, to be the flower girl. And, and so she literally grabs that basket. She throws it over her head. The flowers just fall out. And she darts down the aisle. It was it so was cute. And then she so gives cute. mom the biggest hug at the end. It was adorable. It was so cute. So. And and because back up Friday night, we had rehearsal dinner. So yeah. the weekend was rehearsal dinner, all day wedding Saturday. And then, then Sunday, Sunday yeah. we had a big engagement in our family. Will proposed to Abby 
and they've been dating for a couple years. years. So it's yeah. a it's been, you know, some time coming. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so funny. Yesterday we went to lunch for Abby's birthday. And Will, like, I, I mean, he's my brother, so I can just see it on him. He's he's pretty nervous, you know, but he's he's holding himself fine until my dad shows up and dad drops off a birthday present for Abby. And then he's like, all right, I'm out of here. He goes, see y'all tonight. Ah, and Abby goes, here. Yeah. what's tonight? And she was already kind of fishing. She's yeah. like, what's tonight? And nobody kind of answered because it was not like she asked like directly. She was kind of walking up, getting her drink. And she was like, what's tonight? And like everybody just kind of ignored it. And Will's face was literally white as a ghost. Poor guy. I mean, white as a ghost. And he did not eat one more bite of his food. And if you ever see my brother, my brother, I mean, he he likes to put away a cheeseburger, okay? And he literally only ate half of that burger. He didn't eat another bite. And Abby goes, why aren't you eating your burger? And he was like, I'm just savoring it. And then she was like, you're savoring it. And he was like, I'm going to eat it later. And she was like, when? He was like, I'm just going to eat it later. Like, he was so That's nervous. So it was so yeah. funny. And then, but it ended up being perfect. I mean, he he said it was just perfect. He blindfolded her, took her to the place they had their first date, proposed. Of course, she said yes. And we had, how many did they count? Like 81 people? I think, yeah, I think 81. At my parents' house yeah. last night to mm-hmm. like surprise yeah. them and celebrate the engagement. So we have another wedding coming And that up. was really kind of last minute too, to yeah. pull together. And yeah. then to have over 80 people there. Yeah. That was just super sweet. Yeah, and mom I told dad it. that there was going to be 40 people there. Yeah. Which dad was cooking for everybody. Yeah. But dad is so good at Fortunately, that. Fortunately, yeah. It was like... It was like the fish in the low. It, it just kept yes. multiplying. It was like all of a sudden we had enough food. It just kept the bowl would just did not become empty. Yep. God he had a, he had like a corn chowder with sausage and that kind of stuff, and then like a vegetable beef stew. And I was pretty much the last in the line, and I was like, it's still full. Yeah. No. Like he, I mean, it was. He did great. Multiplied. <laughs> it worked out, but it was so sweet. And then of course we're out talking about wedding dates. When is the wedding gonna be? Yeah. And they're all like, oh, what? Do, I wonder if we get married end of April, early May. And I'm like, great, I'm going to be nine months pregnant. (laughs) So that'll be beautiful. Great photos, you know. But I actually told them, I said, I'm actually so glad y'all are choosing then because I would rather be nine months pregnant than three weeks postpartum like I was for Bella's wedding. Yes. So we're going to, and Mary Kate was one month postpartum at my wedding. So I think this is just, um, it's like I'm getting back what I gave to her. It just like (laughs) goes around, goes around, comes around, goes around. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it'll be so sweet. And we'll just like make sure I'll have the sewing machine ready to oh, yeah, yeah, take yeah. up or add to. Well, or what? what I did in Bella's wedding. I had to buy two dresses yes, because I was like, who knows mm-hmm. what size I'm going to be. Yeah. So I'm going to do that for this wedding. Yep. But the great thing about doing that in Bella's wedding is because I wore this dress in Bella's wedding. And I mean, it was tight. Okay. Like it was really tight because three weeks postpartum. I mean, you look about five months yeah. pregnant. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, right after the wedding, I'm like, whew, okay. That was good. And then I go to hug Christian and like I throw my arms around him and both my straps just go pop, <laughs> like literally pop off. And I'm like, don't move. Oh, don't no. move. I'm like, my straps are off. He's like, what? I'm like, they broke. <laughs> and it wasn't like it was a snap. Like, no, yeah. no, no. They just like pop. Like, popped i mean like the the seams just gave out and so thankfully i had the backup dress so i just went and changed dresses there you go and it was funny it looked like i just had a little reception change so i did that you might need to do that i'm definitely gonna do that yeah Yeah. we're definitely Definitely. gonna do that but hey you know what it's so fun to look back at the pictures and and mark time but these sweet things and their wedding's gonna be gorgeous and i'm so excited for them i I really didn't make a big deal about it because it is not about me but it is just funny that i'm gonna be like so so pregnant but it's so that's what happens at the ages y'all are all so close in age and so it's gonna happen it is gonna happen yeah it is gonna happen but it's so fun because now honey gets to be flower girls in all these weddings like literally by the time she's two she will have been a flower girl in four weddings and then the month after she's a flower girl in another wedding so i'm like you are gonna just be a professional like she is i mean you can as long as uh corey is down at that end and I'm yeah. on the other end. And it works. She's out the door. We got our system. Yes, we got it down. 
from curling and straightening to hairspray to over bleaching, we have all done some damage to our hair over the years. And if you kept up with me over the past few years, you know I've had some super blonde hair and I love to change it up. However, changing up your hair can leave behind some major damage, which I have experienced. So maybe you're like me and you bleach your hair, you change it up a ton or have damage, you just want it longer and thicker. I got a perfect solution for you. If you haven't tried Vegamore, that is your next move. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair growth. The Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and actually improves your hair from the root. You just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and follow it up with conditioner. It's that easy, just like your other shampoo and conditioners. One thing I love about Vegamore is their holistic approach to their hair health, using smart botanicals to promote visibly thicker and fuller hair, and they are cruelty-free with products that never contain parabens or hormones. Needless to say, the products you use for your hair actually matter, and this is nice to know that you're not doing more damage to your hair, but you're really creating healthy hair. With Vegamore, there's no risk in trying it out because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee, but with 91% of customers saying that they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, I don't think you're going to be wanting to return this stuff. This stuff is awesome. Like I said, their shampoo and conditioner is so great. They actually do help see actual change like thicker fuller hair longer hair as well and it's just so easy because it's just replacing shampoo and conditioner it's not like you're adding another routine it's just replacing it with shampoo and conditioner that's actually revitalizing your hair i also love about Vegamore they have eyebrow growing uh, serum and all kinds of different things so it's not just your hair on your head but you can grow your eyebrows your eyelashes whatever you're working on and I love to have thick eyebrows so this is just a great brand all around so don't let damage of the past hold back your hair from the potential of the future. Vegamore is for you and can definitely create some great change. So go to vegamore.com slash woe. Use the code woe to save 20% off on your first order. That's vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash woe. Use the code woe to save 20% off at vegamore.com slash woe. It's a fun season of life and so it's fun. definitely a fun season that we're stepping into because it's Christmas is yeah. right around the corner. Very close. What is it like? Yes. What are we what at? What is today? The 11th? I don't even know. Today's the 12th. The 12th. So, so we we're 13, 13 days, days away. Wow. Oh, Less than word. two weeks. That's crazy. That crazy. So I do want to talk to you about traditions because like I said, you are the queen of traditions. You um, know how to start one and know how to keep one. And I think even <laughs> you saying that you've been at camp for 51 years just shows that you're committed to the things that you commit to. And so talk to me about why traditions are important. Um, for those who have never done a tradition, they might be like, why? And those who have always done it, you know, it might just remind them of the, the things that they love about their family. Yeah, I think that's the thing that just reminds us of mm -hmm. what they are and why they're valuable. And for me, traditions are the things that say to your family, say to you, this is my family. That's sweet. And in saying that, that gives kids a security that gives them a hope for the future, that gives them so many things that if their world is kind of falling apart, say a kid's away at college and it's finals and things are not where they should be, in their brain they can take themselves to, oh wait, in a week I'm gonna be at grandma's house and we're yeah. gonna be eating whatever they eat for their, that's their tradition. Yeah. And so traditions can be things as big as our family goes to the beach every year, or it can be as little as one thing our family does when we pass a state line. Oh, yeah. We all two yell, states. two states, you know. Yeah. And just saying two states every time we come to a state line tells everybody in our family, this is our family. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. This is what says we're, we're all together in this yeah. race of life. Yeah. And so to me, that's what traditions do, whether they're big Sweet. or small, is they bind us together and give us our hope for the future and our, our promises and our love for each other and all that. those kind of things. I love that so What much. do you think? I love that. Well, I you think know. you're so right. I think it is what says this is my family. Like, yeah. this is what we do. This you is know? what we do. And it's fun when you get married because when you get married, you, you say that a lot. Like, oh, this is what my family always does every yeah. year. I want to do this. Or this is what my family always does every year. I want to do this. And like, you get to bring traditions together and then you get to create like your family's traditions and like what we do as That's a family. Right. And then it's also like what we all do as a family. And it is cool because now Christian does two states too. It's like, it's just like in our hell. Every time we pass, we're like, two states, you know? That's and so, so it is funny, but it does remind you of who you are. And I think your hope for the future is so right. And mm -hmm. like you said, if you're a kid, you know, at college or 
even in our family, like when families have gotten divorced, like it's held strong that you've carried so much traditions and everyone's like counted on that. Or even for me, like times where I've just had a hard year, a really busy year. And like over the past few years, I've been so busy with work and things, but I know like I am not going to miss Memo's brunch and the right. Christmas, you know, tradition at your house talent show, which we'll get to in a minute. Like, I'm not going to miss those things because those are things that are so valuable to me and matter so much to me. Mm-hmm. And even now, like, imagining what I want to have traditions for Honey, like, and our future kids, like, when we talked about um, where we were going to be for the holidays, like Christian's family, my family, it really helped us being like, hey, well, what do we want our traditions to be? Like, what do yeah. we want our family to do, our family to hold, it, like what's valuable to us? And so I think traditions also can just keep like your priorities straight too. It ground us. It grounds yeah, you. It ground us. And it's really cool. So yeah. I agree. And all of the traditions that we have have been so sweet. And what, one thing though I do love about you though is no matter how much change has happened in the family, you've kept their traditions, but you haven't forced it upon everybody to have to be there because people do get married That's and right. people are out of town sometimes and things are crazy, but you haven't been like, oh, well, they're gone, so we won't do it. You just do it. And I, I think that's so important to remember everybody out there is that traditions should be fun and life-giving, not binding and sucking the life out yes. of you. And so sometimes we have to be very careful about that, especially as we in the older generation, we get older, yeah. that that there might be a tradition that we have to step away from. And it's hard to, it's like giving up a baby or, you know, things that you love. But we have to be open to that to give our family room to grow and our younger people that space for them to have a tradition. So um, while it's a hard thing to do, everybody out there who's listening to this of the older generation, you just have to be mindful of that. Like, is it time to step away from that? And let other because we have traditions now that we observe in our family that we didn't many years ago, mm-hmm. and we've started new ones that we didn't have, mm-hmm. and we've given we've let go of them, and that doesn't mean you don't love each other or mm-hmm. anything crazy like that. That just means it's time for something new. Yeah, you know? that's so good. I love that. That was a great way of saying it. like traditions should be life giving and not sucking the life. And I do think that you have to like look at it and say like, is this good? You know, is yeah. everybody still happy? Is everybody wanting to do this? Is it so fun? Yeah. Or is it like we're forcing it to happen? Because I think the traditions that we have now, even at times where we've said, okay, is it time to let this go? And everybody's like, no, no, no. You know, <laughs> it's good to just do a little pulse check. Like, uh-huh. does everybody that's like right. this? Is this fun for everybody? Yeah. And it is so fun. And so some of our traditions, like two mama said, we have as small ones as two states. And then I thought of another one, like as soon as we get in the car for any trip, we all sing the song, we're on our way, <laughs> pack, pack up, up our packs. Back. And I remember when Christian first came to our family, he's like, what oh, in the world did I get myself that? into? <laughs> and we all sing the whole song. There may be senoritas. It's just like a thing, but it's yes. like, it just Which sets a comes tone. from Mama Jo, yes. who's now 91 years old. And it was a song back in the 40s, I guess, and in a in a play, a Broadway musical that Mama Jo loved and started so singing sweet. with us when we were kids. And so we just carried that tradition on. And this past weekend, we went down to the Superdome, which is in New Orleans for our, our uh, school's ball game. And I had two of my great nephews in the car with me, my sister's grandchildren. And so I started singing it and, and they weren't singing it. And I turned around and I said, do you guys not sing that song? And they said, oh, we do. We but they're do. But they're like, too cool now you know they're like okay but I just thought it was so fun because that's not our is my sister's kids but they do this they have the same wow and we all do it and we all do it too which again is the thing that says this is our family you know your family you and, and Christian and honey are your family and then it's your bigger family with your mom and dad That's and so then cool. with me and two papa and then all the way to mama joe and and papa shack and That's papa so howard cool. and so all of those things are those things that, um, like you were saying earlier, when tough times happen, perhaps divorces and deaths and things, really tough things in family, again, those are the things that can bind yeah, us together and give true. us that security that uh, we are loved and supported and we're all 
in this together. It's kind of true. A thing, I you know? felt that. I want to talk about, so we're going to get to our traditions after this, but I want to talk about um, just like the first married Christmas and the couple years married, because I feel like a lot of people who listen to this podcast are young married couples. Yeah. And it is really hard, you know, sometimes to give up your family yeah. traditions to go to their families or their families to go to your families. And um, I feel like that's like a hard conversation that, you know, um, to have with your spouse. And it's also even when I've talked to friends about it, they're like, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? It's so hard. And people have always ask me, what do you do? And so I'll just kind of share our experience. So the first year that we got married, we kind of had a different year because we got married on Thanksgiving break and then we were gone for Thanksgiving. So we were with our family for Christmas and Christian and I were like sleeping in mom and dad's little like guest thing and we put our little stockings up. It was really sweet. Um, but we didn't really have to think that far in the future yet because we were like, it was just kind of a world when we had just gotten married. But we did know that we were going to alternate, like we were going to be here this year and we were going to be with his family the next year. And so although I was so grateful to be with our family, I was so sad thinking I wasn't going to be there the next year. And it was just so ridiculous. On Christmas Day, I'm like so happy that we're having so much fun. And then we're like leaving and I just like started getting emotional. And he's like, why are you crying? I'm like, because we're not going to be here next year. <laughs> he's like, you're crying and you're the one with your family. Like, how do you think I feel? I was like, I know, I'm sorry, but I just can't stop thinking about next year. And it was just like, but the reality is that it's hard, you know? It is it hard is to hard. like change your traditions because I like love the things that we do. And you're right. Like I've always looked forward to them. They've meant so much to me. And then I knew I wasn't, this was going to be my last year of that consistency. And so it was kind of hard. But then the next year we were Christian's family and it was so fun and we had a great time. And I got to experience all of his family traditions. And then the next year we got pregnant, which then we were like, okay, what is this going to look like? And it was so sweet because his mom was like, you know, we want y'all to be able to be at y'all's home if that's what y'all want. And so let's think about the best way that we can do this for everybody. And we were the only ones in their family that had kids. And so as far as the younger kids that had kids. And so she was really great about saying, let's work around what's best for y'all right now. And so we decided to do Thanksgiving with their family every year and do Christmas with our family every year. And they come to we us love, love the that. week before <laughs> Christmas. And so um, I get to host their family yeah. and it's so much fun. And we're in the process of making our traditions. I was just calling his mom yesterday and saying, hey, I was like, okay, so I'm thinking what, cause last year we did like a dinner, like I cooked dinner and then we um, all did gifts. So I was like, why don't this year we wake up in the morning, like it's Christmas morning and do a big breakfast and open gifts. And then we like order in for dinner and like make it more casual, like watch a Christmas movie and she was like that sounds so fun so it's fun because now we're getting to create what our traditions are with them y'all as a mom sleep matters so much and i know it matters to everyone but i think you just really appreciate it whenever you have a lack of sleep and if you're sensitive to temperature when you're sleeping like we are in our house it can really mess up with your quality of sleep well if you wake up too hot or too cold i highly recommend you check out miracle brand bed sheets miracle brand makes temperature regulation bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night it's actually really cool these sheets are inspired by the silver infused fabrics made by nasa so this is like legit stuff we're talking about and i'm telling you these are the best sheets christian and i have ever owned we love them so much um even whenever we started like changing our sheets we'd be like no no no, we can't even change it to another pair we are washing them drying them and putting them back on because our miracle ones are by far our favorite ones that we have and not only do these sheets have self-cooling properties so that you can be at the perfect temperature all night but they also are self-cleaning which is probably my favorite part because who likes actually changing their bed sheets all the time not me it's actually so annoying to me and so it's nice that you don't have to ask frequently. Miracle sheets are infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% .9 of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than the regular sheets, which also means that it's better for your skin and who doesn't want fewer breakouts? I mean, this is just a win-win for everybody. If you're still searching for a great Christmas gift, Miracle sheets are the perfect option. Everybody sleeps, so who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious feeling bed sheets? And since these come with three free towels, 
towels, you actually get two gifts in one just in time for the holidays. So go to trymiracle.com slash woe to try it today or gift it to someone special for the holiday season. And we got a special deal for our listeners. You can save over 40% off and be sure to use our promo code woe at checkout and save even more and you get three free towels. And so Miracle Sheet is so confident in their product also. This is so cool. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. But I highly doubt it's going to happen because like I said, these are our favorite sheets. So you can upgrade your sheets to Miracle brand just by going to trymiracle.com slash woe. Use the code woe to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash woe to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. Now, like Thanksgiving's become something we really look forward to there and Christmas here. And so, you know, it does take a couple years to work around what it's going to be. And it's okay to be sad about, you know, letting those things go. And I think just giving your your spouse the grace to let them feel the feels that they have because Christian was sad too. You know, of course he was. He had to let go of his things. Um, And that's the part of the beauty of marriage and the hard thing. That's about, right. you know, becoming your own family. And so anyways, I just wanted to say that because I know a lot of you probably did just get married or mm-hmm. are getting married soon and you're thinking about that and just give yourself the grace to feel the feels, but also embrace the newness and make the new just as fun and start the traditions with your new family that are going to carry you on for the next you know, several years. And so our traditions at your house have always been epic. I remember when we were little and it would be at school and it'd be like, what are your Christmas traditions? And, you know, my friends beside me would have like two lines filled out and I would have like, (laughs) I would like still be writing because we did so many crazy things. And so let's just, let's just recap like the week of Christmas for our family. Okay. Can I back up just one little second? Okay. Because I do want to say that I got married on December the 27th. So it was two days after Christmas. So as you were talking about all of that, I was like going back to, you know, we got married. We got married at Christmas time. And I'm thinking my mom had six kids. What was I thinking? You know, she was having to do Christmas and do our wedding and everything. And uh, that first first Christmas was so fun together because two papa did the 12 days of Christmas for me and presents uh, every, you know, every day and that kind of thing. That's so sweet. And so it was just a super sweet time. And we were so blessed because his family was so sweet and supportive of our family. And so they actually came and did Christmas with us, oh, that's so which, sweet. and we didn't live in the same town. And so that was just a super that's sweet awesome. time. And, you know, there is, um, I think Christmas and any of our holidays, is a great time for us to practice compromise. Yes. And just being grateful for what we have yes. and where we are at that moment and that yes. kind of thing. So I agree. Anyway, and I had to just, throw that just in Just a harp on the compromising thing. It really, I have to shout out my mother-in-law. I don't even know if she's going to listen to this, but that meant so much to me yes. that she was like, you're a young mom. Like, I know everything is crazy right now. Like, what can we do to make it like the best for all of us? Yes. And, you know, Chance, Christian's brother, was in a place where he could come wherever and yeah. they were in a place where they could too but still it was sacrificing them having to leave and it was a huge sacrifice and it meant so much to me that she was willing to compromise and ask me that and I know that's rare and so just shout out to her and also like Mm -hmm. if you are a mother-in-law in in a situation and you're having a hard time with it maybe even like talking to your daughter-in-law or talking to your kids about it just opening the conversation helps so much so that was a great point I'm glad you went back Thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, okay so we were, now what did we say? The we're traditions. going back to our traditions. We have had a lot of traditions over the years that we have loved so much. And what we, for the past many, many years, <clears throat> excuse me, for the past many, many years, my sister started the cookie decorating tradition. And she started that before she had it was kids. was like over 30 years ago. Yeah, with, with I, I don't know, my kids were little. Corey and Ryan yeah. and Ashley were little. And she started the cookie day decorating tradition and that kind of kicks off our holiday time and it's 
it's just so fun. And then y'all all came along and we love that. And it's a lot more icing eating than cookie decorating um, for the first like 10 years of your yes. life. Uh, then yes. we get more creative with our decorating. <laughs> and, yeah, and then then they all got amazing and they were like pieces of artwork. And they Rebecca really took it to the next oh, level. Rebecca is Rebecca's amazing. Rebecca's amazing. Yes. And they do tease me because I save a cookie from every year. So I have cookies. This is <laughs> like the weirdest thing. She could be on like hoarders for this. Or no, not it's hoarders, not. Like, it's like it's my just... strange addiction. <laughs> Two Alma literally has cookies in her house, legitimate cookies that you could have eaten. I would not re recommend doing that now. That are how old? Oh, 1990. She like a yes. 19, and they held and together, they held which together. is kind of concerning when you yeah. really think about it. Why is something <laughs> yes. that we ate still yes, held together exactly. from 1990? It's a little crazy, but when I started it, like when you start any tradition, you don't really think about the 50 years down the road always, you know. So anyway, I have a whole platter of. I just say that when I found out about this, it was just a couple years ago, and I was like, You were not <laughs> saving these cookies all this yes. time. And it's so fun because I can look it at this cookie fun. and say, Look, Sadie made this. That is fun. Little. I'll so give it to you. Fun. It's fun. But I it's was fun. shocked by that. Okay, so we do cookie decorating, and then my mom has always had a Christmas brunch, another kind of kickoff thing. And everybody's, I think, careful to choose what time. No, Joan Ills is night or in the afternoon sometime with all the kids and mama does a Christmas brunch and puts together all these homemade cinnamon rolls and just so many things and then she ends it with a uh, bananas foster which who does that know, you know it's, right? it's amazing so that's and that's, she has the orange joyous orange and the coffee and punch coffee. oh man yeah everything homemade all that kind of stuff and um now mind you COVID had hit us like every other family. So the last couple of years we've been a little hit and miss on, on all of those kinds of things, but those were our tradition. And then we would um, come to our house for Christmas Eve and that's the big family celebration. That's the that's best part. Everybody, yeah. all the cousins and um, extended family, everybody. And random there. people. And random people. There's always, always random people. And I think nobody ever even asks who, who are they. We don't. You know, we just like assume somebody's got them there. Yeah, no. We'd be like, hey. Yeah. Hey, so glad you're here. That's right. I mean, that's so fun. And within that space, there's the traditions that come with that. We gave up many, many years ago trying to bring presents because there's just so many of us at that thing. And we just determined that our gift to each other would be some kind of a talent. So we have this major Christmas Eve talent show that has gone from little so kids funny. singing Jingle Bells to nearly Broadway singing from Will and yeah. just amazing amazing talent so our family this is kind of funny so all the other families like have these great talents okay like <laughs> they can play instruments and they can sing some people can do sign language gymnastics. all kinds of fun stuff. gymnastics yes. like talented people our family we are talented in our own ways you but are you have so like talented. the talents that qualify you for a talent show okay <laughs> which is what this is and yes. so all of us have decided that we're just gonna bring the humor so mm -hmm. each year we come up with a skit and we so do a skit funny. and they're always so funny so we've funny. gone all out and a lot of times well most of them and including this year which i can't talk about the skit this year because two mama doesn't know and it is hilarious and i can't wait i've been like laughing i can't wait for you to know because you keep doing stuff and two bubba keeps doing stuff that's in our skit really? just about what y'all oh, no. are and we last night i was like about to cry i was laughing so hard something two bubba said because it's like in our skit oh, and like hilarious. he doesn't even know he's doing well y'all are so good about doing things that something has happened in the year like that's what I was the say. year with dancing with the we stars do it with the year so dancing with the stars we did like yeah. a whole performance and then i think was mom carrie ann dad was like bruno yeah yeah and Lynn. hilarious we performed a dance we did we've done all kinds of like based on the year yeah we did an elect oh, the election all the way year. back when you were little you were um cindy luhu you had oh, yeah that, we did that, that we've done lots ago. of skits yes. which have been so fun and yes. they bring our family together just practicing our right. skits but they are hard like even yes. already we have had um a tough time all practicing our skit because we're trying to get now our family's grown so much just our your, our your family, immediate family, our immediate yes. family we have like 
well, if you're counting grandkids, like 16 of us now or something. Yeah. And so trying to get all of us to do a skit together, which of course I'm trying to run the show because I wrote the <laughs> skit and I'm like, you people, <laughs> show up on time. It was so funny because yeah. I was like, we're pre-recording this year because I don't oh. but I don't trust them to perform. I'm to like, we're, we're going to yeah. pre-record because every year this happens, we get there and everybody's like, I forgot to practice. And I'm like, are Back. you kidding me? Composting is something that I just got into a few months ago. Honestly, I never even thought about it before, but being a busy mom and having a daughter where there's a lot of food that can go to waste, Lomi has been a great solution because composting is something that you actually don't need a lot of extra time for. My Lomi makes all the work so easy for composting, which I love because I don't like letting things go to waste, but I also sometimes don't have time to learn a completely new thing. So this is like the best of both worlds. Lomi is just a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. Hours. There's no smell when it runs, which is great because pregnancy, you know, you can smell some things, but there's no smell and it's really quiet. I have less garbage to take out each week, which is also really nice. I'm sure Christian is really thankful for that. And I mean, who's going to complain about going from three trash bags to one trash bag? No one. Lomi even has an app that will help you figure out what you can and can't compost if you're like me and just didn't even know where to start. My Lomi just sits in the kitchen, which is so perfect because it can clean up after our meals. We just put it all in there, all the leftover scraps. We actually like to eat a lot of sweet potatoes and potatoes in our house, but let's be real, they don't always all get eaten. And so it's, you know, kind of unfortunate to just have to throw it all away. So it's nice to just pose in the Lomi and let it just turn those scraps into dirt in just a few hours. Also, the Lomi looks nice too. So you can't even really notice that there's this composter in your kitchen. But if you want to start making a positive environmental impact or you just need to clean up after dinner and make that a little bit easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi, that's L-O-M-I dot com slash woe and use the promo code woe to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head over to L-O-M-I dot com slash woe and use the promo code woe at checkout. Food waste is gross, but Lomi is a great solution. With the holidays just around the corner, I know Lomi will be the perfect gift for someone on your shopping list or even perfect for you to have in your kitchen as you cook all your holiday meals. We started the pre-recording yeah, years ago did. because I'm hosting the party and it's just, it's hard to host and be ready to entertain and that do your talent and that kind of thing. I mean, when I say talent, I'm putting that real loosely for it's me. It's very and loosely for very, most of us. Very loosely, There's yes. There's a couple cousins. We have a few see. cousins who are super talented. The rest of us are just like, you know, we're just in it <laughs> for the fun. trying to make people laugh. And so many years, several years ago, Tupac and I were going to do uh, the song from Frozen. So that's, oh, how, that that's how the pre-recording yeah. started. Uh, and it is on YouTube, yes. And so we were coming back from visiting the other grandkids in Alabama, and I was making him practice, which is the story of our life, you know, of course. So I was making him practice, and um, he was just not getting the words, not, get, not getting them. And I, he said, I am, I'm getting them. And I, so I don't know if you know this backstory. So I put, I said, I'm putting the camera up here on the dashboard and we are going to, I'm going to show you that you are not getting these <laughs> words down. So I put it up there and then we watched it back and it was, it was so, so hilarious funny. that I was like, this is what we should do. We should just show this and so not funny. even try to do it live. So we did. So that started our pre-recording. That's been several years ago, whatever. And y'all danced to out. Shake It Off. We did Shake It Off. We did Grease. So yeah, y'all have done a couple job. that have also made us cry. Y'all did um, the year of Les Mis. I, me and Avon wrote a, I wrote a song, and Avon played the piano, and I sang that to all of my grandkids. That was sad, and, and sweet. that was super sweet. And then last year was our fiftieth anniversary, so we we did. I think we did a live something the year before. We sang a song together so, about your relationship, and then yeah. you did a like slideshow or something. Yeah. It was sweet. And when I say sing a song together, remember, we're not talking <laughs> about like, great. This not is, like everybody can sing. You're no, just singing. No, this is just, we're just singing. You gotta sing so to sing. You, you don't have to be all that talented to put on a family talent yeah. show. It, it's even funnier. Yeah, you have it's a, actually funnier when you're who, not. Who can't, who can't sing. And then with the ones who can sing, then you're like, oh, wow. Look yeah, at them. I remember yeah. one year I sang with Macy and Allie and everybody was like, Macy and Allie are so good. And I was like, Okay, I was up there too. Thank you. Thank Dating, you. You can I sing. I can sing, but I got very overshadowed by the two but, of them, and I've not returned to singing at the talent yeah, show. Yeah, those since two then. are kind of they, over the they're top. Really they're, they're really good. They're really, really good. Um, so. And then I love, you texted the group text the other day, and you said, you know, it's time for our thing again. And you said, 
I'm I'm making my famous um, brisket <laughs> sandwiches that you buy from Sam. Gotta get from Sam. Yeah. And uh, you said one other thing, and then you were like, and y'all can fill in the rest. And I love that because I think so many people put so much pressure on them. And we talked about this on the podcast uh, a couple weeks ago with Danielle, who's a chef, and she said, just don't put pressure on yourself. Like, don't yeah. try to cook the most gourmet meal. Don't try to do something you've never done before because then it's like right. it puts too much stress on you. Just right. do what you know. Yeah. And people are happy, and it's not about the That's food. Right. It's about the fellowship. It's about the fun. It's about the memories. Yeah. No one's going to remember 10 years from now what two mama cooked. We're all going to remember well, no, for our sure. time together. <laughs> yeah, they will remember what your dad cooked. That, that might be true. That might that be true. true. But they're not going to remember that. And but yeah, I mean, I get a brisket from Sam's that's pre-sliced. I heat it up. I do those Sister Schubert rolls yeah. and put them in the middle of that. And Solid. Everybody love loves it. it. I love yeah. them. I actually, I actually look forward it. to that because it's a tradition. It's a tradition. It's and I, I love that Danielle said that, who is a great cook. Yeah. And so that's just sweet for her to give those of us who aren't that permission to say we don't have to be the best cook you can find things you know it doesn't matter and then we do yes. um the secret santa and then we do a the secret adults santa and the yeah kids well oh and we actually do santa yes yeah, Sam yeah, santa comes to our house every santa christmas eve and it's so special of him it's very sweet of him it is so I sweet can't believe he does that we are we are singled out about that and he comes to our house every year so all the littles and when I, we stay little in our family, you as it's long as you're still in high school, when you graduate from high school, you're done. You're you you, you enter the secret. You're entering Santa the secret Santa zone. thing. Yes, but if you're 18 and you're still in high school, you're sitting on Santa's lap. You are to get that, we all have to do it to get your gift. Yes, and so my grandson Avon and and Annabeth, the two cousins, this is their last year, and then we start. Of that whole generation, then we start on the great grands. Yeah, you know. Uh, so this year will be fun because we've got Honey and Ella who are at the age of not liking Santa yeah, at all, at all, at all. We've got Zane and John Shepherd who are have a clear understanding that he's the man. Yeah. So they are like running up there, yeah. but the two little girls no, and then and Holland. I don't know what she'll. She's so chill. What she'll do? She might. She I might remember do it. us all being in the back. And we'd be waiting for Santa, and some older kids would spark rumors that yes. Santa might be too Papa. Yes, and then no, he is. <laughs> that is Santa, and just the wow. arguments and the fights between the kids because yeah. it's conspiracy theory, right? Yeah, um, it because so it is fun. odd that two Papa does leave it the is room. He's never but there. It's yeah, it's strange. We've always thought that we were. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> but that's so sweet of Santa. To stop in at our house we on Christmas it. Eve. We I don't know it. where else he goes, but he I comes to our house on Christmas here. Eve. So uh, that kind of ends the night uh, for well, the kids get all their stuff. And then we do our secret Santa with the adults, those who are out of high school and above. And um, just a lot. Everybody brings their traditional kind of food. And you and that's another tradition thing. You kind of get where you expect this from this Aunt Kim, Kim, this from Aunt Carol, you know, Salad, Aunt Carol, you things. know, you kind of, but Mary that's, Lou's, um, banana caramel pie. So yeah. You get yeah. everybody else's tradition, you get, which is sweet. You get their things and that just kind of, and if they don't do it that year, it's a little bit like, wait, you, what happened? What is. happened to Christmas? <laughs> it is. It is. And it's funny. Dad always makes something really good and random. Yeah. Now, yeah. his is random, but you know it's going to be good. good. It's going to be a big pot of something. something. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's is what sure. he, the only thing he'll eat. That's why he probably does it. Yeah, that's right. He's so picky about his, <laughs> his so picky. eating. Yeah. Um, and then the next morning, we wake up and we do Christmas at our own house. Mm -hmm. And then we come to Two Mamas for just her grandkids come to do a little breakfast and gifts at your house. And yeah. It's always just been so fun and so sweet. And so, you know, that's a lot of traditions. I don't, yeah. not, you don't have to do all those traditions, but I think even right. if that can inspire you to do one of those traditions, it's just so fun. Just kickstart it for your family, whether it's a breakfast or um, a, a talent show, a game night. Um, something oh, we do that's games just, too. I yeah, forgot to throw that we in. Do um, yeah, we do games. New Year's, we always do Scrabble tournament. Yeah, we do Scrabble. So just fun mm -hmm. things like that. It's yeah. just bringing the family together and having a good time. And yeah. I love what you said about traditions. I think this is the best way to say it. It just, it's so consistent and gives you a hope for the future. And I love that. 
Um, someone asked a question and I want to throw this in there. They said, how to introduce your kids to the storyline of Jesus during Christmas. And obviously like this is the most important thing of mm -hmm. all of Christmas. And we probably should have even talked about this at the beginning, the reason for the season. And part of our tradition at your house is before we even do the talent show, we tell the story of Jesus, but the kids do it. And yeah. I think that's a good way to introduce your kids to it. Do you want to yeah. share that? Well, this is so fun because last night I was, tonight I have a Christmas party for in my mentoring group. And I was, I have a Christmas drawer. Well, I have a Christmas cabinet and drawer and attic. You know? mm -hmm. So I was looking through my drawers that I save everything from all the years. And I came across uh, the stack of C is for the Christ show that y'all oh, would hold true, up, you yeah. know, and that kind of thing. We may pull that out this year now that we've got some little ones. But so every year I would get the grandkids together and teach them a play and um, some kind of some way to present the storyline of Jesus and you were Mary one year and John Luke was Joseph mm -hmm. and we had whoever was the baby but then we were all like panicky <laughs> that y'all would drop the baby or whatever Valid. but we we do start off um, every holiday every time we get together with the story of Jesus which is the most important thing mm -hmm. and um, I, I was I was talking to John Shepherd the other day we were talking about, we took William to, we went to see Santa and, and I posted about this and we had a little talk about him and we were watching him while the girl, little girls were playing and we talked about his beard. It's like, like Dubs, his grandpa, and he's, he's, um, he teaches us about giving and sharing with other people and those kind of things. And so I think it's important for us to talk to our kids about what Santa represents too, yeah. about that giving and um, giving to others and gifts and that kind of thing. But it's more important that we read the story yeah. about Jesus. And we've done that too. Like we've had Mamma read or we've done, we've said it, you know, we've taken mm -hmm. little parts and read. Last year, I think we did the whole candlelight. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did lit candle, candles. Which is really cool. And sang Holy Night, I think, yeah. Allie. Lettuce and Holy yeah. Night, one of our one of our better singers yeah. in the family. She's probably our best to throw <laughs> yeah, out there yeah, besides she, Will. She did it. Yeah. And so we had all the little candles around the room. So, you know, whatever traditions you have, somewhere in there, yeah. that is that is so important yeah. that we do that. It's true. This year on the Ellis Sister app, we've been doing an Advent study and it's been like so good because yeah. I've never like been the most consistent person when it comes to studies. Mm -hmm. I'll miss a few days or whatever, but I've really loved this one because it's it's short but it's so good and a couple of things they've said in there. Just it's one of those things where you can know something so well, but even knowing something, you still need to be reminded of it. And mm -hmm. Shelly Gigli was telling us that the other day when she was just encouraging us, encouraging us for passion. She was like, you can know something, but you need to be reminded of some things. And that's just the story of the gospel. Yeah. And so as I've been reading the Christmas story, I know this story, but I'm reminded of things. And I'm even, um, my eyes are open to new things that I haven't even thought about before. And so it's just amazing whenever you start learning about Jesus and really diving into his life, you can never stop learning. Like right. you can always be encouraged or inspired or learn more from the life um, and the story of him coming into the world. So I think it's like, because my background is education and I always think it's like when we learn a uh, we learn anything. When we learned how to do fractions, the first time we saw a fraction, we're like, what? What are you trying to tell me? This is crazy. Then, of course, by the end of the school year, oh, fractions are easy, yeah, you know. It's and it's, that's true about anything that we're educating ourselves about. And that even the story of Jesus, as we get older, we're, we do see other things. We think about the age of Mary yeah. and we think about the dilemma that yeah. they faced. And, and when we're a little kid, we don't, don't see that, that. Yeah. but with each year, because of the growth in us, mm -hmm. we see more about yeah. what God was telling us and teaching us through yeah. that whole story. So you know, it's yeah. hilarious. Y'all are going to think this is so funny, especially just knowing me because this is just so something I would do when I was little. So after hearing the story of Mary, I just thought, that was so incredible that God gave her a baby. This is before, of course, I knew how babies were made, figured it out. But at the time, I did not. I was so little. And I just thought that was so cool that Jesus came into the world as a baby. So I remember taking this and being like, okay, this is huge. I went upstairs at our old house, at our old, old house by camp. I went upstairs. I got on my knees. And I was saying to God, 
God, please make me the next Mary. God, okay. please yeah. bring Jesus into the world again. I will I will have a baby, like telling God, like I will birth the baby. I want to bring Jesus into the world. And it's like so funny that I did that, but I actually think about that now, like with what I do that, okay, obviously I'm not the Virgin Mary, but like I want to bring the good news into mm-hmm. the world. And like the heart posture is the same of like, I want to bring Jesus into the world. I want to bring that good news. And so I think, you know, we can all take that spirit and be like, okay, I might not be qualified. Mary wasn't either, but I want to bring the good news into the world. I have such a desire to bring hope to people. And the story of Jesus is the hope. Um, Last thing I want to talk about, because I think this is important for young moms out there. Someone asked uh, for moms this time of the year, any advice that you have? And I'll go for young moms and you can just speak to moms in general. But I remember last year, honey's, you know, one, not even. And, um, I remember, but gosh, she was only seven months, I guess. It was her first Christmas. And I remember everybody's like, oh, it's her first Christmas. Have you gotten her stuff? And I hadn't really gotten her a lot of stuff because I was like, she doesn't know, you know? Like, she's not even going to, like, know what's going on, whatever. And, like, I made it sweet for her, like, of course, the whole tree and everything. And then I bought her a few little things that were a big thing, like that little car um, that she can walk around in and stuff, which she used one time. Um, But it's just funny because I just remember thinking, like, we're putting all this pressure on ourselves, like, it's her first Christmas, but like she literally like will not know how many gifts she got, what she got, anything. And so I remember um, I like she was playing with some of her gifts before Christmas because I was like, I just needed her to have a new toy. And I'm like, why are they sitting there waiting for two weeks? And she's not gonna remember. And I wrapped those same gifts and like gave it to her again at Christmas. And of course, like she just loved it. Like she didn't know. Yeah, she's just like looking know. at a bow and looking yeah. at the wrapping paper. Like she's seven months old. And then, you know, she sees her little car and she sits in it for like, what, 10 minutes? But it wasn't the car that she loved. And that was like the thing that I actually got her. It was more just the entertainment of everything going on. And so I just say to young mom, moms like don't put pressure on yourself to make it like an instagram perfect christmas like you know what makes your baby happy and just make your baby happy like it's just a joyful day of celebration and i think that because of social media sometimes it's like this pressure for everything to look perfect and be perfect and have all these gifts and do all these things and whatever and there's so much going on if you have a seven month old one year old just make it fun just make it fun but this year of course honey knows more and we know more about her and what she likes and it has been so fun to buy her things that we know like she is going to love this because this is what she's thought about all year this is the things that she's gotten excited about and so this year is a little bit more fun but just for Mm -hmm. those new moms like you're a new mom you know wrap a gift she already has and it'll be fine they'll love opening it and just um bring them into all their traditions we're going to take honey and Sheffy and Ella and then tonight to go see the lights and they're going to love it. And so it's just fun. And I they won't remember that either. No, but, but it's just fun. It's, all those are experiences that will build on each other. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I mean, even though they're not going to remember it, they are just going to be with you guys. Yeah. Which is the, it's the true. best thing. And like, thing. I think, you know, there's a, time in your life where when you're younger like Christmas is like the best thing ever and then Christmas is always the best thing but when you get a little bit older and you start to figure some things out it's not as exciting as it used to be and you kind of miss the childhood that it was so exciting and so fun and then when you have a kid it's all fun again and all exciting again like that all in wonder and sing it in their eyes and their excitement it's just it's really sweet I that's think. what I it say is it all so back. great about family is you get to relive things yeah. all over again and so fun when honey was over yesterday we've got a big santa that two papa bought at walgreens like you know four feet tall or whatever and she will not get near that santa (laughs) but she she doesn't leave the room she just looks over at it and she says um the shakes her head i'm like like, you don't like that santa no no (laughs) No. you know this is just so cute but it's just the funnest thing to watch anything through the eyes of a child and so tonight y'all go look at Christmas lights which we can't because I've got something else and and you won't you will see those lights in a different way mm-hmm. because you're watching their yeah. little sweet faces the best. light up it'll be honey's so new fun. um 
her new like shock face when she goes <gasps> like puts her hand over her mouth. She puts like, both of those hands. Both of her hands. It's so cute. Oh, it's the so cutest. Fun. Just, we love our babies. We That's do. Sure. All in wonder. It's so fun. Yeah. Well, I hope that y'all were encouraged with this podcast and it made you even more excited for the season that we're in. Christmas really is the best um, because more than the magic of Christmas is the truth of Christmas, the good news of Jesus. And we need to celebrate that. And I think it's just so awesome that on Jesus's birthday, it's the day that everyone gives to each other. It's the day of families coming together, traditions coming alive. And I think that, you know, to honor Jesus's life, I think that's such a great way to do it, a day of so much joy. Um, but we also have our hearts go out to those who aren't having a good Christmas, who have lost a loved one, who have gotten divorced, like we just talked about, just hard life things that have happened. And um, I think also that's a great thing to realize and remember that this is the good news story that Jesus, a savior came into the world, no matter what you're going through, there can be hope for a future. And no matter what you're going through, whether you're um, at the lowest place of your life, you're uh, ha- carrying a lot of burdens, you're weak, that he can be your strength in that time. And so whether it's the highest of the highs, or the lowest of the low for you, Jesus can meet you wherever you're at. Um, there is no story too hard that he cannot intervene in, no story too great that he isn't greater than. And so just to encourage you, that is the reason for the season and we're grateful to get to celebrate it because of Jesus and get to celebrate each other because of his love for us. So we love you guys. I hope you have a great Monday and I hope you have a great, great Christmas. Of course, we have more podcasts coming after this, but this will just kickstart some fun holiday talk.